Hey guys, Spy Derivative Man back talking to you about derivatives of trigonometric functions. Now, I got another question for you. Why did Peter Parker get grounded? Because he spent too much time on the web. So let's start by reviewing some of the trig identities you learned in Algebra 2 and Precalculus. We have the Pythagorean identities, quotient identities, which functions are even or odd, double angle identities, and half angle identities. Some of these will come up in calculus, and you need to have these memorized for when they do. When you're taking derivatives or integrals, you need to know when to substitute in some specific identity. So make sure you have these memorized when the test time comes. Let's go ahead and review the product rule. So here, anytime you're taking the derivative of two differentiable functions multiplied together, what you're gonna do is take the derivative of the first function, multiply it to the second function, and then add that to the first function times the derivative of the second function. The quotient rule says that anytime you have two functions being divided and you wanna take the derivative of that function where two functions are being divided, what you do is you take the derivative of the numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared. Now let's get to the new stuff. We have the derivatives of trigonometric functions. So the first two you already know. The derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine x and the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. The new stuff, the derivative of tangent of x is equal to secant squared of x. The derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x cotangent x. The derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent of x. And the derivative of cotangent x is equal to negative cosecant squared x. Now, this looks like a lot to memorize, but you've already memorized two of them, so you really only need four more. All of these you must have memorized for the AP test, so make sure you memorize them sooner rather than later. Let's go ahead and prove the derivative of tangent of x is equal to secant squared x. What is tangent x? Tangent x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. So the derivative of tangent of x is equal to the derivative of sine of x over cosine of x. Now we learned anytime you are taking the derivative of two functions being divided, we need to use the quotient rule. So that's the derivative of the numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared. So the derivative of the numerator, derivative of sine of x is gonna be cosine of x. The derivative of our denominator is gonna be negative sine of x. So here we have cosine of x times cosine cosine of x minus sine of x times negative sine of x all over cosine squared x. Now cosine of x times cosine of x, that's cosine squared x. Negative sine of x times negative sine of x is positive sine squared x. And we learned from our trig identities that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is actually equal to one. So we're left with one over cosine squared x. If we remember, one over cosine is just secant. So one over cosine squared x has to be secant squared x. And that is how you prove the derivative of tangent of x. Don't be shocked like Electro. It's example time. Now example one says find the derivative of the following function. So here we have our function 2x cubed minus tan x. So what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of this. Now by the sum and difference rule, because this function has multiple terms, we want to take the derivative of each term. Derivative of the first term, 2x cubed, requires the constant multiple rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of x cubed, which is going to be 3x to the second, and then multiply it by the 2 that's out front, and then you would get 6x squared. Here, the derivative of tan x we know now is secant squared x. So once I simplify this, I get my derivative, which is 6x squared minus secant squared x. For part b, we have function x times secant x. Now this is a function where you have two functions being multiplied together, x times secant x. So when we take the derivative of this, this is gonna require the product rule, the derivative of the first function x times the second function, secant x, plus the first function x times the derivative of the second function, secant x. Derivative of x is just one. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Now when I simplify this, I get secant x plus x times secant x tangent x. Now each of these terms has a secant x, which I can factor out and write my answer as secant x times one plus x times tangent x. You guys remember Charlotte's Web? Great book. You try. Okay, so we're taking the derivative of this function. Now, this function has multiple terms. So anytime you are taking the derivative of a function with multiple terms, you need to take the derivative of each term by the sum and difference rule. 
Here, we're going to take the derivative of our first term, which is negative cosecant x. Now, we are actually going to need to use the constant multiple rule because we have a negative 1 multiplied out front of our cosecant x. So I'm going to take the derivative of cosecant x, which is negative cosecant x cotangent x, and then multiply it to this negative 1 that's out front. So I get positive cosecant x cotangent x. Here, derivative of sine x is just cosine x. Now, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit further. So instead of cosecant x, I'm going to write it 1 over sine x. And instead of cotangent x, I'm going to write cosine x over sine x. Now I can multiply these two fractions together, and I get cosine x over sine squared x. Each of these terms now has a cosine of x, which I can factor out. I could then rewrite this right here. Instead of 1 over sine squared x, I could write that as cosecant squared x. And that might look like it's it, but if you remember your Pythagorean identities, cosecant squared x minus 1 is actually equal to cotangent squared x. And you're done. Here, the derivative of h of x. That's what we're trying to find. And we have two functions being multiplied together. So anytime you take the derivative of two functions being multiplied together, we need to use the product rule. And the product rule is just the derivative of the first function, x cubed, times the second function, tan x, plus the first function, x cubed, times the derivative of the second function, tan x. So now, we take the derivative of x to the third power, which is going to be 3x to the second, or 3x squared, times times tan x plus x cubed times the derivative of tan x, which is secant squared x. So then I could rewrite this after I multiply those things together. And you see that each of these terms now has an x squared that I can factor out, and then you're done. Example two, we're finding the derivative again. Here we have two functions being divided. So anytime you're taking the derivative of two functions being divided or the quotient of two functions, what you want to do is you want to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says you want the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times derivative of denominator all over the denominator squared. So derivative of secant x is going to be secant x tan x. The derivative of x we know is just going to be 1. Now what we can do is simplify this by multiplying x times secant x tan x, and secant x times 1 is just secant x. Now each of these terms has a secant x, which I can factor out and write my answer as secant x times the quantity x tan x minus 1 all over x squared. And we have found the derivative of our original function. So for part B, we again have two functions being divided by one another. Anytime you have the quotient of two functions that you want to take the derivative of, you need to use the quotient rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the quotient rule. That's the derivative of the numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared. Derivative of sine x is going to be cosine x. Derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared. And then the denominator, we have x cubed to the second power. So anytime you have power to a power, you multiply those two things together and you get x to the sixth. Now let's simplify this a little bit. We multiply cosine x times x cubed. You just get x cubed times cosine x. Sine x times 3x squared is just 3x squared sine x. Now, anything else we can do here? Well, each of these terms in the numerator has an x squared we can factor out. And then that x squared, we can then cancel out with the x to the sixth in the denominator. So this cancels out, and we're left with x to the fourth in the denominator, and you're done. Thanos is a big purple idiot. You try. Okay, so we're taking the derivative again of a fraction where we have a function in the numerator and denominator. Anytime that happens, we have to use the quotient rule. Quotient rule is derivative of the numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared. Now the derivative of our numerator, this is two terms. So we take the derivative of one, which is zero, minus derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. So we get zero minus negative sine x. Over here, derivative of sine x is gonna be cosine of x. Now let's simplify this a little bit. Zero minus negative sine x, we said is just sine x. And then over here, if I were to distribute this cosine, I would get cosine x minus cosine squared x. Now, sine x times sine x is sine squared x. After I distribute this negative, and I get minus cosine x plus cosine squared x. And what we can do from here, I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x, which we know is just 1. And I'm done. For part b, we're doing the same thing. We want to take the derivative of this function, which is completely different than this function, it would seem. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If I take the derivative of this function, which is two terms, I need to take the derivative of each term by the sum and difference rule. When I do that, derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cotangent x, 
And then over here, derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. Now I can simplify this, minus minus becomes a plus, and I can factor out a negative cosecant x from each of these, and I'm done. I found my derivative of this function, which you could see is completely different than this derivative over here of this function. But the crazy thing is that these two functions right here are equivalent. They are the same thing. If you were to simplify this over here, you would get this, meaning that these two functions up here are equivalent. They are the same. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at this derivative right here. If I were to simplify this, I rewrite negative cosecant x as negative 1 over sine x. Cotangent x is cosine x over sine x, and then cosecant x I rewrite as 1 over sine x. Now I distribute this negative 1 over sine x. Now these two fractions have a common denominator, so I can add them together, and I get 1 plus negative cosine x, which is 1 minus cosine x, over sine squared x, which, whoa, is the exact same as this derivative over here, meaning that these two functions are the same, just written differently. Now example three says find the slope of the tangent line and an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the given point. So we have a function and we have a point and this is gonna be our point of tangency for our tangent line. Now, if we wanna find first the slope of the tangent line at this particular point, that means we want the instantaneous rate of change of this function at this particular point. That means we want the derivative of this function at this given point. We want the slope of this graph at this given point. All of those things, remember, mean the same thing. So to find that, we must first find the derivative of our function. Derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Now that we have the derivative of our function, this is not the slope. This is a function that helps you find the slope at any given point of this function. So I take this point, pi over 3, comma 2, and plug it in to this function right here. Now, there's only an x to plug in, so I take pi over 3, plug it in for x here and here. Simplify this, and I end up getting that the derivative of my function at this particular point, the slope of my function at this point, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of this function at this point is 2 rad 3. Now, this is a slope, but I want the equation of the tangent line also. So I take this slope, and I am given a point as well. And if you remember, in Algebra 1, we have something called point slope form. So I take my slope, which is 2 rad 3, I take my point of tangency, which is pi over 3, comma 2, and I plug those into point slope form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1. I plug in 2 rad 3 for my m, for my x sub 1, I plug in pi over 3, and then for my y sub 1, I plug in 2 right here. Now, if I were to simplify this, I just distribute the 2 rad 3 and then add 2 to both sides and I have the equation of the line tangent to this graph at this particular point. Here is my function and the tangent line graphed on my graphing calculator to confirm my result. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so. You try! Okay, so again, we want the slope of the tangent line first, which is the instantaneous rate of change of this function at this point, which is the derivative of this function at this point, which is the slope of this function at this point. All those things mean the same thing. So, to figure that out, we find the derivative of our function. Derivative of cosine x, we know, is negative sine x. Now, this is not the slope. This is the function that helps you find the slope. The derivative helps you find the slope. So, I take the point of tangency, and I plug that into the derivative function, and I get the slope of the tangent line to the graph at this point, which is negative one half. I then now have a slope and I have a point. So to find the equation of the tangent line, I just use point slope form. So here's my slope, negative one half. Here's my point, pi over six comma rad three over two. Point slope form, if you remember, is y minus y sub one equals m times the quantity x minus x sub one. So I take negative one half, plug it in for m, take pi over six, plug it in for x sub one, take rad three over two, plug it in for y sub one. Now, if I simplify this, I distribute the negative one half, add rad three over two to both sides, and I get the equation of the line tangent to this function at this particular point. If I graph the equation of my tangent line and my function, you can see that we are tangent at this particular point, pi over six comma rad three over two, and you're done.